It's pretty and all, but would you really want to live there? I mean, no, I wouldn't want to live there. I mean, this place, let me explain exactly where we are. So this is called Monsanto and the Game of Thrones is filmed here because it's so picturesque and there's lots and lots of history here. People have been living up here for ages and they kind of actually made houses underneath the gaps that these massive granite stones created. So would I want to live there? No, it's high up on the top of a hill. You get like screaming winds all the time and stuff. It's a beautiful view. It's a lovely place to go. Nice restaurants, amazing little uh, tourist spot. But live there? No. I wouldn't mind living a little bit further down in the valley, though, where we were staying in Pedroga or São Grande, like you saw last week. I could, but then I'd really have to think about I'm two and a half hours away from the ocean, and I love the ocean. So there's lots of rivers around to explore and that stuff. It's great, but I don't know. I think you've got to be a special type of person to want to live in the countryside away from the ocean, and that's not quite me, but it might be you. It might be you. So let's explore a little more. And I'm going to take you around the areas because we're using Pedro Pedrogão as a central point because I was staying there. And I've branched out like a little star. And I can show you exactly all some of the most amazing places around. And there's still more awesome places to explore up in the Serra da Gardunha and the Serra da Estrela. So let's have a look. See where I went. In 1939, Monsanto was awarded a silver cockerel or Galo de Prata, which was mounted on top of the 15th century Toro de Lucano in the center of the village. The name Monsanto is derived from the Roman Mon Sanctus, or Holy Mount, and it became a Moorish stronghold until King Afonso I conquered it. In 1165, he granted custody of the city to the Templar Knights, and they fortified it under the direction of Gualdin Paij, the Grand Master of the Templars. Unfortunately, an ammunition depot explosion in the 19th century destroyed most of the castle, but it's still a very impressive location. I wandered up there as the sun rose and sat still on these ancient granite rocks, marveling at the view. And I sauntered past a plaque, and taking time to read it, I discovered that in the 16th century, King Manuel I had ordered a manuscript to be written. He dispatched a royal clerk by the name of Duarte Armas, and ordered him to travel the entire border of Portugal and collect and compile information about all of the border fortifications. He ended up visiting 56 border castles throughout 1509 and 1510. What an odyssey! This started a chain of thought in my mind, but I had more places to explore. Anyway, from that hilltop, I dreamily observed the western side of this large valley where Pedrogan was situated, and I wanted to experience the other side. So the next day, I drove over to Alpedrinha. Now, with less than a thousand people here, it's small. And it's worth noting that in 1864, there were 1,600 people. So it's been a slow decline. It is now part of the Mountain Villages Network, which is 41 villages belonging to nine municipalities. This seeks to promote and protect their heritage. Check out aldejdemontanha.pt. The crown jewel is the Picadero Palace, an unfinished work from the late 18th century that after several more or less noble occupations, it was a hospital, a courthouse, and a printing house, it became a visitor center and a space for the dissemination of local history and culture, although it didn't seem to be very open when I was there. Otherwise, I would have loved to have gone in and checked it out. And it's not far away from Fundao. Actually, this tunnel here goes straight through the Serra de Gardunha, and it goes down to Fundao, where 12,000 people make their home. And there's recently been an initiative by the mayor to promote Fundao as a tech hub. And there's move to Fundao.pt, and there's all kind of initiatives like incubators and, and some great companies that have come in to provide jobs in Fundao. So it's really quite a growth area at the moment, which is exciting. It's also the home of cherries. Like cherries are fantastic and they make this beautiful cherry pastel de nata, which is actually a, a pastel de cereja. And it's fantastic. I had one. 
Also, very fertile farming area around Fundao because the Zezere River starts its journey down to the, Te the Tejo from here. And Wolframite, which is a strategic mineral really sought after in World War II, actually, um, is found a lot here. There were a lot of British and Nazi mines in World War II, not near here, but further north near Coimbra. So Wolfram has got quite an interesting history in Portugal. morning so I'm walking along the main Moa dam wall here and it's a bit it's gonna be a really hot day but it's a little bit windy at the moment as you can probably see from the, the scuff on the lake on the barrage but you can actually walk all the way around this barrage I'm not going to well who knows I might um, I'm just gonna walk a little bit and see how far it goes and maybe come back after an hour or so because it's a beautiful area and there's mountains over there so try and get some Try and get the drone up to get some good shots. I've just walked down to this little sort of beach thing here, and it's uh, it's beautiful. It's actually quite warm. And I was thinking about a swim, maybe a little later, maybe on my way back, I'll grab a swim. But you can look right over there. And that's where the standard place is, like it's a Praia Fluvial, where people can come and cool off in the hot, hot summer days. And it's Monday today, so I don't think there'll be many people around. And it's a snake track. So there definitely are snakes around here, and apparently in the Serra de Estrela, there's the only poisonous snake in Portugal, uh, according to lore. I need to double check that with my snake buddy. But um, yeah, one has to be careful, there are adders around here. Not like in Africa, obviously, where you can get killed wherever you walk. But um, yeah, you just got to be careful here. And the rest of Portugal, they're all harmless snakes. Well, this is a, a fantastic little eight kilometer loop and uh, gives you a great idea of the area. I mean, it's not, it's not super long, it's not super arduous, um, but it's a, it's a beautiful, and it gets right up to the high point so you can see beautiful views. So it really is worthwhile having a little loop. I know you can do um, a hike all the way around Maimoa Dam, which is about 20 k, so it'll take about five hours. So if you've got more time and more energy, you can go for that one. But uh, I just did this one this morning. Now I'm gonna head over to Sabugal and grab a coffee.
I was quite surprised at Sabugal actually. It was larger than I thought and it was more modern than I thought. There were some like, nice little office spaces lurking around the corners and you know, a couple of people in suits walking around, which is quite amazing. So it's not just a countryside village. And um, obviously it's got a lot of history with the castle. And as I sat down to have a coffee, I was just thinking about the castle. And I was thinking about the plaque that I'd seen in Monsanto. And this was one of those castles, one of the border castles, one of the 56 that Duarte Armas had documented all around. And I did a little bit more research and I found that the tourism board actually had this thing going. Um, and there were 62 castles now because a few were built in the, in the meantime. And I got to thinking, what if I visited and filmed every single one of those 62 castles? That would really change this channel around for the next few months, wouldn't it? So from Sabugal, I headed south back to Penamacor and then on to Peña Garcia with a new level of excitement. I was super, super pumped about this idea. So that's a little slice of central Portugal. If you're a country person, you're in luck. But just remember that the winters are cold and wet and summers are super hot and dry, really are. A little bit windy as well. So just make sure you're aware of that. And also small town mentality is rife here. Everyone else will know exactly what you're doing before you even know what you're doing. So, but other than that, restaurants are cheap, property is cheaper and life is slow. Now, I can't wait to tell you more about the 62 Castles project because, um, but first of all, I've got to head back to the Algarve and got, well, we've got a day planned with these amazing YouTubers. It's a couple and I bet you, you know them too. They're really amazing. I've known them for a couple of years and, um, you know, we're going out on a proper day out. Actually, we're heading from Olhão all the way west. I'm going to take an amalgamation of ferries and canoes and walking and hike. It's just, it's, it's a fun day. So we just ducked into the ocean because it's really hotting up. And I'll show you the whole area as well. So join me next week and these other YouTubes. Try and guess who they are. All right. See you next week. Holgarvaddicts.com